hear about Sharon when she was brand new and stuff. That was funny. I think they, they gave up on me at one point is what I heard. <laughs> I, I would love to hear about that because there have been little things that she's said. Like, well, you know, I heard someone this morning say, we get so inspired by other people's successes, mm. but we relate to other people's struggles. Right. So, and I thought, isn't that so true? Well, we love to hear these success stories, but then we get down on ourselves when we don't have the same story that they do. You know, I did not fast track to NMD. So just so you know, <laughs> but I was pretty consistent, but that's why I relate so much to people's struggles because that's the story of most of our lives. Learning to take the next step, overcoming the struggles and becoming stronger for it. And this business is a perfect, it's a perfect playground for that kind of personal development that will change the rest of your life, your health, your business future, your family memories. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I already started here. You know, I'm like, dang, girl, you're ready. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, uh, before we get started, I, and I, I'd love if you go down memory lane, um, Amy. I have a little special picture that we like to look at every once in a while. <laughs> this was my first meeting of Amy, if I recall. Let's see. Was that my first meeting of you? Yes. Yeah. What did I turn this on? There we go. So we went to a boot camp <clears throat> and I met this lady named Amy Guest and she was a senior sales coordinator. Right? And and we went out to lunch, even she bought our lunch, and I was surprised. I think she got a hamburger. <laughs> you know how got the hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? You got the hamburger, I got the salad. <laughs> oh, I got the hamburger, that's what it was. I was projecting. <laughs> that's normal. Um, so anyway, yeah, I got the hamburger. I think I felt bad, that's what it was. Um, because I was in this, you know, different realm of healthy people. And it's so funny, look at how many people Amy brought to that boot camp. I think it was a boot camp in Fort Lauderdale. It was amazing number of people some from georgia like a lot of them from georgia right uh two or three two or here three, including your sister who later became an nmd she's on the left right here that's janelle whiff for you guys uh -huh. who um, know here's uh, well here's amy in the middle with all her crew and then here's me beside amy and here's julie and abby and here's Lori Gabriel. She was the first distributor under Julie. Lori Gabriel on the left. The left. Yep. Um, anyway, and the, the one behind me, who is that? She looks super familiar. She's probably still in the business. That, her name will come to me. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, she's still on Juice Plus, yes. Yeah. So out of that picture, five of us became national marketing directors. And... And Amy did a lot of things along the way. You know, she came and had a little meeting with us. I remember at Julie's little table in the kitchen in her townhouse, it was me, you, Abby, and Julie, the four of us. And I remember her talking about the seed and that the bird takes the and Don't chase the bird because you'll never catch the bird. You know, like don't chase after people who go away or, um, customers, you know, whatever, you know, you planted the seed, but why would you chase the birds? So that was like my first. And so she's like this wise lady who uh, just was like this, this leader. And, um, and she's just grown so much since then. She's obviously grown to national marketing director. And she's one of the first people that I saw get to national marketing director. And then her, um, her sisters did her aunt did, her uncle did, Julie did. So I was like, okay, I definitely can do this. And um, since then it's been, it's just been wonderful. She treats us so amazing and she's always there for any of us. And she is somebody who we call on for any time we want inspiration. She has a phenomenal story. So I'm really excited for us to make the most of this today. So you guys be thinking commenting, chatting. We will address your chats 
So we'll pause in between when we can. It's not going to be a pure like um, just, you know, all the whole time, but you guys interact, all right? We always like to do that. So we'll go ahead and turn it over to Amy to at least start us with whatever she chooses to start with. If she wants to start talking smack about me, that's okay. Or if she wants to start with her story, that's good too. Up to you, Amy, whatever you want to do. No, oh, Sharon, I just love this. This is really fun. You yes. know, this journey is a journey of personal growth and I've seen it in my life and I've seen it in Sharon's life. And that's the, the hope that I see every time I take the next step, whatever, whatever it is that I'm about, <laughs> you know, I realize that I don't have all the gifts, but I can take the next steps and we truly are better together. You know, I'm, I get inspired by inspiration. That's kind of my sweet spot. Others are really good with systems and organization and, you know, Sharon and, and Doug have their unique fingerprint and their unique gifts. So just because you're not just like me or you're just like Sharon and you're not like Julie Herbst, great. We need each other. We are truly better together. And it's all of our strengths. We pull on other people's strengths and we live in our strengths and that makes us better. And that really is the story of my growth with this business. Um, I'll start with my story and then um, we'll do some Q&A probably or comment or whatever. Sharon, interrupt me anytime. Um, and then I have a couple of inspirational things because that's really my, that's really what I live on. I was going to say it's my bread and butter, but it's really my smoothie every morning, you know, right? <laughs> Um, okay, so 24 years ago, I went to a family reunion. My aunt had been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. My aunt lived in Iowa. This family reunion was in South Dakota. This was, I, I never went to a family reunion. We lived in South Florida at the time. It was too expensive to fly the family out there. This was the first one and the last one that I ever went to. <laughs> but talk to my aunt, who is only seven years older than me. She was 20 years younger than my mom. So, you know, she had just been diagnosed with an autoimmune condition. And I'm thinking, you look pretty great. You know what's going on? So we were talking and, um, and she told me that, you know, she really had started, stepped into the world of nutrition to try to do everything she could to be as healthy as possible, even with this diagnosis. And I was instantly captivated by what she had to say because I was already interested in nutrition. I'd gone to school and studied nutrition in college, had a degree in home economics. I was your favorite home economics teacher back in the day. And, um, and so it really, it sparked a huge interest in me. And I watched a video. There was a one VHS video back in the day. Okay, this is like walking to school in the snow, both ways, you know, uphill. Um, one VHS video she gave me and I watched that over and over again and it just made so much sense to me and I knew that my family wasn't eating enough fruits and vegetables I was working full-time uh, my husband and I owned a small um, had a, a candle business and had a kiosk at uh, Sawgrass Mills Mall down in Fort Lauderdale Sunrise Florida and um, so we were busy working all these crazy mall hours, nights and weekends and holidays. And I knew, I knew better, but we weren't feeding our family very good. <laughs> A lot of fast food. Um, that was just our lifestyle right then. And so the idea of getting fruits and vegetables in a capsule or gummy or chewable or the smoothies was like, wow, okay, this is the easy button. So we said yes. And I said yes for our whole family. Um, I didn't ask Scott's permission. I just did it <laughs> just because I was the one that bought the food in the family. And um, we, we got started. And I can tell you that one simple step for our family's health has changed the trajectory of our whole life. Well, what happens when we got on Juice Plus? We were a trial user at that point. But I started to learn about the relationship between nutrition and disease, and I was hungry to learn more. And I think there's people all around us that are looking for what we have. They just don't know it exists yet, especially back in that day. Now, it's even easier to find the information that we're looking for. 
but I was looking for this product for our family's health and we got started and I wasn't even expecting anything to change. I thought I was healthy when we got started on Juice Plus. But several months in, I realized that, oh my goodness, my immune system was so much improved. I had been taking a bunch of medications for sinus infections that recurred over and over again. It was like, when was the last time I had a sinus infection? And the light bulb started to go off and I started to realize how much better my health was. And we saw differences in my son's health and his asthma and my daughter's allergies. And you know what else happened? You start to learn about the relationship between nutrition and disease and you become more aware. So the first gift is that you get on Juice Plus and it's the easy button. The second gift is you become aware that this is something that needed and that the power of food, the power of whole foods. And that awareness helped us make better, healthy, better decisions about what food we were buying. We wanted more fruits and vegetables. We started to crave more fruits and vegetables and our family was just feeling great. And I, you know, I look back from 24 years ago, I'm 64. Okay. I know I don't look it. <laughs> But I'm 64, that I was 40 years old at the time. And, um, and I feel better in my 60s than I did in my 30s. You know, I, I wanted to take a nap every afternoon in my 30s. And here I am, you know, I'm just so grateful for the quality of life that this has given me. And I know it's not perfect, but it's, at, but it's so much better than it might have been. I look at my pictures of my mother at my age right now, totally different picture. We look for, we look, she looks 20, 30, 40 years older than I do right now, you know, at, at the age I am now, you know, so I'm just so grateful for the gift that this brought into our family's life. So, um, you know, I just found myself sharing it naturally with people and right away after I got started on Juice Plus, I started to learn more and I signed up to be a partner just a couple weeks later because I was naturally sharing Juice Plus. So that kind of launched me into the business. So um, that was the beginning of our journey. And then we've been taking Juice Plus for a couple of years when um, Scott, my husband, Scott, who'd been an All-American athlete in high school and college, he held the state record in the state of Florida in discus for seven years <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> um, he, he broke a bunch of records and um, he, was, he was an athlete and he loved working out. He was a picture of health. He still looks awesome, I just have to say. <laughs> but um, he, was, he was diagnosed with heart failure at the age of 45 and we were shocked. It was like, how can this happen? In fact, I said, you're on Juice Plus, how could this happen? <laughs> and you know, I realized after a time, you know, taking Juice Plus is not a guarantee that you're never gonna get in an accident, but it's like wearing a seatbelt. It's gonna give you a chance to survive whatever life throws at you. And um, Scott, you know, the doctors basically said there were multiple, there was a lot of issues. It was a virus that attacked his heart muscle um, unexpectedly. And, um, they said, go home and get your affairs in order. If you're lucky, you can get a heart transplant. Well, that scared us to death, but we were preparing for that. So I wanted to do everything we could do to keep him alive, you know, and, and try to not have to go down the road of a heart transplant. So we were traveling to a lot of different cities and doctors around the country trying to do everything medically they were recommending. And at the same time, I was learning more and more about the power of Juice Plus, the clinical research on Juice Plus, and how that translated to any health condition. And, um, and one of the studies was done in Foggia, Italy. It's a little talked about study. You ha never hear about it. But it reduced oxidative stress on the heart mu muscle, which had a direct correlation to the contractile function of how much your heart beats and linked to the blackberries in Juice Plus. Isn't that fascinating? In the berry blend. And, um, you know, so Scott was taking a lot of Juice Plus, more than the average bear. And 
And, um, you know, over time we began to see gradual improvements. And yes, he did everything that the doctors recommended, procedures, trial medications, all kinds of stuff, just to keep him alive. And um, at the same time, I was doing everything that we could naturally, holistically, whole food wise, dietary excellence, and lots and lots of juice plus. And um, over time, we began to see the heart function improve from 22% up to 50, 55% heart function, which is actually very good. And um, it's not quite where, it's not perfect, but it's really so improved and he's doing better than his doctors ever thought possible. It's been 20 years now and he still has his own heart, never had the transplant, thank you Lord. And he's on no prescription medications today. And I, I'm quick to say Juice Plus did not heal him. Our bodies are an amazing creation and our bodies are designed to heal. We have to give it the right building blocks. And Juice Plus is one of the building blocks that is easily absorbed and gets into our cells and it can make a world of difference for anybody. You know, um, it doesn't cure diseases. It's, it's, what a, it's just whole food. It's, it's, it's powerful and food, you know, that old saying from Hippocrates, let food be your medicine, let your medicine be your food is, is just a powerful thing to grasp hold of. And so, you know, the more I learned about the relationship between nutrition and disease and the power of whole foods and um, the realization that we can't get what we really need from our diet alone. So bridge the gaps with whole food nutrition. And that's, that was the best place to start. And I got you know, I found myself just sharing this simple gift, this easy button with everybody around me. And, and then I was introduced to how, you know, then I grasped the, the significance of what this business could do for us too. So I'll, I'll come up for air and take yeah. a drink. And <laughs> come up for air for a second. So I remember, um, I remember when that happened. Amy was seeking out lots of uh, specialists and things, and she was already a leader in our company. I think you might have been a senior sales coordinator or a QNMD. Yeah. And the company really got behind you, and they really wanted to help her get to NMD even. I mean, it just seemed like, I don't know what they were doing in, in the back stages or whatever, but it seemed like everyone really wanted you to get to NMD so that you could get those benefits for yeah. Scott. And I also remember being at a, a training that Amy was supposed to be at, but because this was all going on and she left a really awesome um, thing that I hope that you're going to talk about, but uh, there's just so many directions we could go with your story. Let's talk about how the company might've come, you know, beside you during that time. And also maybe even your paycheck. I don't know. Did it keep coming? Wow, yeah. Okay. So when Scott got sick, at the time we were both working, you know, we had owned a business at Sawgrass Mills Mall and that had, you know, been great for us financially. But at the time we had transitioned and Scott, um, we had sold the business. Scott had gone into the ministry full time as an associate pastor at our church and I was sharing Juice Plus, you know, that, that, that became my full-time focus. And um, so we were in a big transition at the time. And when he got sick, you know, the church continued to pay him for about a year. And then they had to replace him. So then mine was the only paycheck coming in as a qualified national marketing director for our family. And that was really tough <laughs> because that was a position I never saw coming and I never, I didn't ask for <laughs> to be the only breadwinner, you know, so we lost his, his paycheck. And then my why got really big. And I think back on that story and I'm thinking, I am so grateful that I built this business before I needed the money before it was crucial for me to get to NMD so that I could get the corporate benefits package. I am so grateful that I got a vision and got passionate about what we have to share before 
a life crisis hit us, you know, and, um, and fell in love with the community and the message and the, and the opportunity that was here um, to grow and to build. And, you know, I really wanted time freedom and time flexibility um, at the very beginning. Um, when I started, we were, had a very successful business at Sawgrass Mills Mall, but we weren't thrilled with making lots of money if we didn't have time to live. <laughs> you know, make a life, not just the living. We were making a living, but we didn't have time to live life, you know, when that business owned us. <laughs> and so I saw that I wanted to have more control over my time. That kind of set the ball in motion to move away from the retail business. Scott wanted to be in, in ministry and I wanted to be, have more flexibility working from home. I knew I had to find a way to contribute. So we had made that transition well, I'll back up just a minute. Part, part of my why was the fact that we were working at the mall before we transitioned out of that. We were working at the mall holidays, nights, and weekends. And I can remember at, during the Christmas season driving home from the mall at midnight or one o'clock in the morning because you have to work long hours and crying the whole way home saying I don't want to do this anymore and I had been in juice plus you know for a year or two you know so that was part of my transition the struggles that I went through were really my friends to help me find the why that I needed to move on you know? and that can be a good thing so if you're if you're up against a rock and a hard place in your life use that as a stepping stone to be resolute in where you want to go with this business. And, you know, I, I look back at the struggles that I went through in the, er the earliest years um, to help me find my why and to push me forward when it was maybe uncomfortable to take another step at times. So um, we transitioned out of retail at the mall. We're in the ministry. Suddenly Scott gets, has to be replaced and mine is the only paycheck. And my why grew even bigger. You know, I had to find a way to, you know, cover the family expenses. And, um, you know, I was borrowing against the equity in our house every month in order just to make ends meet and pay the bills and trying to juggle all these doctor's appointments and everything we were trying to do for my husband. Plus keep my juice plus, keep that plate spinning <laughs> and take care of three kids. And, um, and, and, you know, you do what you have to do. I'm not a superhero by any means, but you just take the next step. And, you know, I, I, I was introduced to Jim Rohn, who was a life and business philosopher back, you know, 20, 30 years ago, that has impacted a lot of people. And he said, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. <laughs> And so I, I realized that, you know, the struggles that we go through can either become an obstacle or they can become stepping stones. And, um, you know, I, I chose to turn those, those rocks in the way into stepping stones for myself and, um, and just kept taking another step. So you know, it was a five year journey from the time I said yes to Juice Plus and to this business until I made national marketing director. And, you know, some people do that in one or two years. You know, we heard Shelly Mac Mackey uh, uh, last month. And, you know, Shelly Mackey got there in 13 months. <laughs> From zero to M in 13 months. Okay, that's my hair on fire. That's inspiring. But I relate to the stories of people that overcome their, the obstacles that can get in, in their way um, more than stories of, of overnight success almost, simply because that was my story of getting up when I got knocked down and keeping my eyes on a goal that inspired me and just to keep on going and growing. And Jim Rohn was a big piece of that mindset shift for me that helped me um, focus on the growth. And, you know, once Scott, 
we lost Scott's paycheck on my journey as a QNMD. Then the big goal was to get to NMD. And the beautiful thing about this whole company and community and business is that everybody wants you to succeed. Nobody wants to put their thumb on you and hold you down because the business model is built so you only can get to the top if you help other people rise. That's the only way to grow this business is by helping other people. Does that get you guys excited? <laughs> that, that's such a beautiful gift that we have to share. You know, that we get to help others. We can only succeed by helping other people get what they want and help them succeed. Help them get what they want. People want to be healthy. They want to feel good and they want to look good. Okay, we have an answer for that. <laughs> that gets them closer to their goal. And we help people dream bigger. We help people grow personally. We can help people bridge some financial gaps. And there's some people that want to, you know, play all out and, and get to the top and replace an income and get full-time benefits and replace their husband's income or their spouse's income or a partner's income and, you know, blow it up anything's possible. <laughs> so, and I had no idea, Sharon, when I started this 24 years ago, this month, thank you very much, that it was going to do and allow us to have and to do and to be and to experience all that we've experienced. I had no idea what I was really saying yes to other than Juice Plus sounded like a good idea. And I don't know anything about this company, but I trust my aunt and uncle. If they're in it, then I'm going to try it. You know, that was, that was my, that was how much I knew at the time. But I, I, you know, for me, faith is a big piece of my life. And I'm so grateful that God knew what I needed even before I knew I needed this. And, um, and it's, he's taken us on an amazing journey and given us friends that are like family and um, given me so much more than I thought. I was signing up for when I said yes to Juice Plus. So, you know, the gift of help is one thing, but the gift of a community like you guys is, is even bigger, you know? Um, we all need community, and, that, and that's one of the things this business has provided for, for me and for each one of you, you know? And I think I would have probably never met Sharon and Doug Farrar had we not connected through a series of ex exposures in this business. And that's another unique piece of this story is that, you know, Sharon was five people down from me. There was, there was a lot of people in between Julie and me. There was Linda, Pam, Jody, then Julie, then Sharon. Okay, Sharon was fifth, fifth person down from me on my report. Okay, and you just, I was just willing to work with whoever. <laughs> so that's how Abby. Abby was six down from you, and you, you adopted Abby for quite a while because Julie and I were in baby land. Yes, you were. And Abby went to events together and, and things like that. Yeah, and share, you guys know the story of how Julie kind of put the business aside for about 18 months when she got pregnant and then she had Hannah and then Sharon was having babies and they were kind of not coming to events and I'm leaving them messages and they're not responding. Ghosting people was not a word back in those days, but they did it. They started that whole thing, you know. <laughs> so... Um, but I, I would call, I would always invite, I would always connect with them. And um, I never, I didn't take it personally, you know, I just, I always just invited them again. And, um, and then, but Abby, it was timing for her. And she and I did a bunch of events together. Sharon refused to do wellness presentations and she actually threatened to quit the business if we made her do an in-home presentation. And now she's the queen of presentations. It's not, she, I mean, she would never have believed that she would be doing what she's doing right now on this Lunch and Learn. Um, but that's the beauty of this business. It's a, it's, a, it's a personal growth journey cleverly disguised as a business. So when somebody says, no, I won't do that, it's like, I don't even hear that. It's like, you don't even know what you're saying no to. 
we're going to love you into this business and we're going to help you grow. And, um, you know, some people will do a little and they'll be on Juice Plus for the rest of their life. And they're, and if that's you, that's your huge blessing. Yay. And a lot of people will grab, start off doing a little, and then over time they'll find their stride and their, they'll, that passion will grow and they'll do a little bit more. Okay. They'll grow it a little bit more, maybe make $500 a month or even up to a thousand. And some people will grow even more than that. And many of you on this call, I know, have a comma in your paycheck. And that makes me happy because I know that, you know, my yes trickles down to the next person's yes and the next person's yes. And every single one of us are a link in that chain to another person. You know, if I had not said yes, you, none of you might be on this call today. It, I was just one of those links in the chain. And, you know, and, and the next link and the next link and the next link, you know, provide the way for somebody to um, experience the health benefits as well as the, um, the financial possibilities that this business can provide. I think Antoine has a question. Okay, you know, um, I, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, you, did, you did inspire me, and um, I learned a lot about what you said. Sometimes we get inspired by uh, others' inspiration, or sometimes by struggles. Um, I have to go back to work, but I am I am I am a um, Juice Plus member now with you guys, and I love you guys' story. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you, Antoine. That that just me <laughs> goosebumps. We're so glad to have you part of the team. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I feel welcome. Thank you so much. Good deal. <laughs> can I ask Peace, everyone? Can I ask a question, Amy? Sure, Doug. So it's kind of like a clarifying question, I guess. So a lot, um, a lot of times people will face struggles or distractions. And that's oftentimes a reason why they go away from Juice Plus or they go to this thing or to that thing. How did you know when times were tough? You, it wasn't like you were making a ton of money yet. Right. How did you get the vision? How did you know, how did you choose to go forward in Juice Plus and not say double down on candles or go get a job somewhere else or something like that? How did you know, like, how'd you know? Great question, thank you. <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know how I knew, I, all I knew, all I know is that I got started before I had a huge financial need, but I did have a need for time freedom and time flexibility. And I saw what this business could do and I heard enough stories. So in my early years before I had a huge reason to do this business or my why, my why was that I wanted time flexibility and freedom. Um, Probably the best answer is the inspiring stories of other people. And I had gone to a, an event and a conference and a boot camp early on in that first year of the business. And I heard the stories of other people's success. And I thought, if they can do it, I can do it. I mean, they're not more special than me. They're pretty ordinary people that have just take, you know, climbed that ladder. There were some super inspiring stories like Jeff Roberti, who's kind of a phenomenon in the world of home businesses and network marketing. And I heard him speak several times. And then I got impassioned with our message from Wendy Campbell. And incidentally, all of us are part of Wendy Campbell's team, who is the most successful female marketing director in the whole company. And it's her passion that has really ignited this company at a whole nother level so we're all the lucky whole company to be part of one animal's team that's for sure so it was the events and the stories that helped me doug I, I probably realize the potential for this business the opportunity that was here so that i didn't look elsewhere you know i i just knew that this was my home you know I was passionate about the product. My belief was growing stronger and stronger and stronger every year. And um, 
because I plugged into personal growth, I started to believe in myself more than I ever had before. Tell us more about that, Amy, because I think you did have a vision for this business. Like you were, you were set. And actually, Wendy Campbell reached out to uh, Amy because she was showing up on her PVC report as somebody who was a superstar coming up the ranks. And so Wendy reached out to her to help her. But Amy did a lot on her own as far as personal growth and practicing and she's super diligent with that. So share, share that too. Well, I, I plugged into personal growth resources that they shared with us on Vox. Back then it was called VoiceCom, but you know, it was the same kind of system where we could share information. And, you know, I learned about Jim Rohn and Zig Ziglar and John Maxwell and these personal growth icons and heroes that had a lot to say that can help us grow. And, um, and I, I started paying attention to that. And, you know, at the time that I started the business, I had a 20 minute commute to work, to work and home. So 40 minutes a day, I'm listening to audios from Jim Rohn or one of the personal growth leaders. And, um, and, and that I, I know helped to change my mindset. It all, everything starts with what you think. Okay. Your thinking affects your feelings, your feelings will affect your actions. If you want your actions to change, change the way you think. And I was putting 40 minutes of positive thoughts into my head every single day on the way to work. And if I was working from home, I was listening to Juice Plus audios or I was listening to personal growth things. So I did a lot to invest in myself. And you know, when I started, I was by myself in Florida. My upline was in Iowa. Her upline was in Missouri. So I didn't have anybody holding my hand doing an event for me and none of that. If an event was going to happen, I had to do it <laughs> if it was a local event. You know, so then I had to step into that role of figure it out and do it. <laughs> I didn't have anybody to hold my hand in that respect. So I just had to take action and do it. And um, that was probably a gift. You know, I couldn't depend on somebody else to do the presentation. I had to do it the best I could. And, you know, imperfect presentations are better than a perfect presentation that you wait to do, that you put off until you get perfect at it, you know? If you want to know the very first presentation that I did for Julie at her condo, when she lived in a one bedroom condo, <laughs> her first year of marriage was, we didn't have anything fancy like we have today. We didn't have Zoom and all this stuff that we can put on the TV. I bought a flip chart that was probably 18 by 24. I hand wrote all the bullet points. I flipped the pages one at a time. And I read the bullet points. That was my presentation. And um, that was it. <laughs> I think we showed a, the, the VHS um, tape as well. So it was a system that delivered the information. The passion was in our heart to share this message. And um, I just did activity, but I plugged into the inspiration that was all around me. And I want to share, um, I pulled up a couple of notes of things that um, have inspired me. Do you want to hear some of my inspiration that helped me along the way? <laughs> okay, let me Amy, can we can we hold off on that for a second? Yeah. Um, let's just ask anybody if they have any comments or questions first, and then we'll we'll go into the the inspiration because I know you got some really good things happening that are coming up. But I wanted to see if uh, I know I know they have some comments and questions. Don't make me a liar. I'm not looking at the at the chat, but that's okay. I can. <laughs> I'm always trying not to be the first one. Go ahead. <laughs> it's okay. You're a leader. Leader. Well, I so appreciate that you reminded us of Jim Rohn and Zig Ziglar and Maxwell because that made such a big difference 
when you feel alone, I think it makes a difference when you can hear with some humor, like Jim Rohn gives it to you, that other people are experiencing what you think is only your issue, quote unquote. So that's been, that's really helpful. Um, I did have a question though, and I, I guess, um, I guess you answered it already. I guess the, the, the answer is in the question, how do you encourage new people who feel um, insecure about the business, insecure about what other people will think, um, and not, not ready to take that, to take that leap. And um, so what would you say to someone who says, and it's not just one person, you know, I, I find it, it happens a lot. Um, I don't want to be pushy. I don't want, you know, I didn't follow up. I figured I'd wait for two or three weeks and then get back to them. What would you say to help them to feel, um, to be more confident? Oh, Nalani, that's such a good question. And at first I didn't see whose name was accompanied this person walking oh. <laughs> during the call. And who was that walking? Know. And now I see it too. So hi. Hi. <laughs> I love, but that's a question I think probably most of us on this Zoom have asked at one time or another. How do we help someone who's having those doubts or questioning themselves or um, worried about what other people will think if they share this product or this business? Um, it's part of the culture that we're growing up in, okay? I didn't even worry that much when I got started, but I think the world that we're living in today, we're so impacted by what other people think or say or whatever. Um, I, I think one of the best ways is to help build that belief in our product and our business. I, they're feeling that way because they don't know what we know. They don't know the efficacy of Juice Plus. You can read negativity on the web, but we know that that's, you know, that, that doesn't hold water um, in the world of what Juice Plus really has been proven to do. Um, so we want to build people's belief in the product and the company, the business model, oh my goodness, and themselves, you know, and that is the gift that this business provides, you know, and, um, and the gift of team, you know, just what I see right here on the screen right now, the gift of team is huge, okay? So connecting people to the community helps people overcome that negative self-talk or that, that questioning the product or the business. They'll know where to come to get the right answers. And um, a couple months ago, I did a call for Wendy Campbell's whole team on the five beliefs because those five beliefs were foundational to get me where I am today. And I didn't start at that place. This is a business of personal growth, cleverly disguised as a business. So we are all in the business of helping people grow. Not everybody that we get started is going to climb to the top. 80% of people are just going to be happy making zero to five hundred dollars a month 15 percent are going to be happy making 500 to five thousand a month and five percent are going to say i want to move beyond okay they're going to latch on to the opportunity and i know sharon is working towards the million dollar club <laughs> she and Doug. and why is that a noble goal because she cannot succeed without helping a lot of you succeed she cannot climb to the top without helping other people get what they want, good health, and the finances to enjoy it. And so that's a noble goal to, in our kind of business, in the Juice Plus company specifically, that's a beautiful goal, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm on that road too, Sharon, so let's do it together. And who else wants to join us? <laughs> help more people, help more people. <laughs> that is so funny. I know that um, when Wendy became a millionaire, Jeff Roberti said to her, what's your next goal? She's like, I just got to millionaire. What are you talking about? 
He's like, well, unless you have a next goal, your team will not be able to move forward. If you don't have a goal that you're moving toward, they're not going to have somebody to follow you. So a million dollars seems pretty far off, but um, Wendy is challenging us. So we're, we're, you know, we're along for the ride. And just like Amy, you never know where this business is going to go. We're not dead. So we got to keep moving forward, right? So um, we're going to put one foot in front of the other. Jennifer? I'll just say, Sharon, in regards to the Million Dollar Club, okay, that was not a goal of mine at the beginning. I remember when we were first married and I had a baby or a one or two-year-old. Back in the day when we went to McDonald's, rarely it was a it was a huge stretch to spend 25 cents on an ice cream cone um, so i know what it's like to pinch a penny our food allocation budget for the week was 25 dollars. that's how much money i could spend on food for our family for a week um and yeah it's a different day <laughs> But that was not much money. <laughs> so all I'm saying is, you know, I know what it's like to live frugal and there's nothing wrong with that. And there's blessings there. And I also have, am experiencing, you know, the joys of what this business can provide. And if you can see that direction right now that I'm looking out over the lake, it's like blowing my mind. <laughs> but, um, you know, what was the question, Sharon? <laughs> when the lake oh. blew her mind. <laughs> yeah, the lake blew her mind. Um, well, we'll get to, let's talk about your lake for a second. So <laughs> I, I have been in awe of Amy and the things that she's done to continue to move herself forward over the years. Like she's showing us the lake. So the other mm -hmm. day I called her and I'm like, listen, I know you got a lake house. I want to see it. So I FaceTimed her. That's what you can do with people, just by the way. Um, so I'm like, show me the lake. So I don't really see this lake on Facebook, but I, I don't see the house or anything. So anyway, that was fun. Um, but Amy's always been someone who has put forth a goal that was like, you knew the goal and you knew the realization of the goal. And I think that's a really good thing. Like, I remember when she took her girls to New York City. You know, or when Scott and Luke went on a trip to go surfing in California, or when they all went to Italy. You know, they're just, there's like landmarks with, with Amy's journey. You know, when she moved from Miami to Georgia so she could be closer to her parents. Um, so she does things very methodically or thought out, and she's always a little bit goal directed, you know. And so it's very admirable. One of the, the things I loved about her, one of her first things that she may have realized from her journey was when she had an interior decorator as one of her gifts to herself, I think, right? I mean, I don't know. I could be making that up. Oh, well, I did that in before Juice Plus. That was before the Juice Plus well, days. Before Juice Plus. Maybe you just told me that could be one of my goals because I was in all of her house. And when we moved up here, we did hire a decorator to come in and do all the stuff because that's not my strength. Okay, if my house looks good, it's because not because I did it. Okay, <laughs> and um, and right now we bought this gorgeous place on the lake, but we had to redo the whole upstairs. So that's almost gutted, and um, it is gutted upstairs, and except for my office, and um, we're living in the basement, which is pretty awesome right now too. <laughs> But um, yeah, you know, I, I set goals along the way because this business introduced me to that idea of setting goals, you know, of, of it's not the goal that you set, it's the person you become in the striving, in the process to get there. It's not reaching the goal and making a certain amount of money, it's the person you become in the the greatest benefit that you gain from this business and, um, and yeah the, the other amenities that you get the beautiful view or the house or the vacations or saying yes more often to your kids those are all the extra perks that come with this business you know saying yes when my daughter wanted to study abroad in Italy that would have never been on the table before the juice plus business 
um, and then taking the whole family to Italy to see her at Christmas time and touring the country. That was amazing. That's the, my kid's best memory from growing up. And then taking my whole family, flying everybody up to Canada um, a couple of years ago for my 60th birthday and going through old Quebec. That was amazing. And, um, you know, flying the kids to California and taking them surfing and then going up to the Redwood Mountains and seeing the huge tr Redwood trees and um, just being able to say yes more often, you know, surprising my daughter and taking her to Boston for her birthday and flying her friend up there to surprise her, you know, just fun things that you can do. It's the memory. It's the family memory oh, that you created. Yeah. So Amy, um, Jennifer asked, what is your simplified process to help a new teammate see the vision? Like you, you know, we've watched your, your growth and everything, but how do you help that new teammate see the vision and get into action quickly to move forward? Um, you know what? My computer is about out of, uh -oh. I might have to run upstairs and plug my computer in, the, in my office. Um, the best way to help see the vision is a three-way call or a Zoom with an upline. Okay, that, that is what my sponsor, my aunt, Jeannie Williams, did for me. She plugged me into a call with Wendy Campbell. And that set my hair on fire. I couldn't sleep the rest of the night. <laughs> but you can't create the vision like Sharon and Doug can because they've lived it. Okay. And um, that is where you always pull in your upline for a three-way call. And listening to this too, you know, you can tag them on, on things like this. So Amy, um, do you want to go get your, your power cord or do you want to try to do your... Um... Yeah, it's noisy. I was going to run upstairs, but the work crew is all working up there. Talk among yourselves. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Great. <sighs> Any thoughts, you guys? I mean, I think that we need to have a dream board or a sticky note board party, right? Don't we need to do that? Put some goals out? Yeah, she's so sweet, Nicole. I know. We could learn a lot from Amy. And I, I love that she's got this lake house that um, her kids, like just like Wendy Campbell, built this farm, a horse farm in Montana, where all the kids are now moving there, you know, isn't that what we want? We want our family around us. And so now Amy's slowly but surely getting her family around her more and more in Georgia. Luke's the one who might want to go to Florida. I said, just get him on the lake. Just, you know, buy all those crazy machines. She's like, I'll get a wave runner so that he'll want to stay in Georgia. So uh, anyway, it's pretty cool. That's uh, one of the, the reasons to have for the children and grandchildren to come around. Okay, so when is a good time to do the sticky board or dream boards? Is it like a Saturday night special? Um, sometime around conference? Sooner, later? What do you guys think? You guys are putting it in the chat. The weekend? What I'm thinking, um, I don't know, not to put a monkey wrench in anything, but what I'm finding that working one-on-one -on -one with, pe with people um, is really helpful because it seems when, you, when we're in a group, there's that, um, I don't know. I know what I'm thinking, <laughs> but um, I don't know quite how to express it at the moment. But what I'm finding is that a lot of stuff that we do, and maybe I'm thinking about events, um, but what I'm thinking is that people tend to have more of a, of a responsibility to be there when it's an, when it's an appointment just with them. And, um, but certainly, you know, and, and we talk about those things and really get into those questions that you asked last week which I find were extremely helpful to do as coaching for coaching because you actually get to the point and it seems that when we are in a group, nobody really comes out with what they're really feeling. Mm. 
And so that doesn't get addressed. Not to say that, um, you know, a, a party, vision board party, um, doesn't have its benefits because it does. There's the camaraderie, there's the, even the, the um, excitement level could be brought up just listening to each other's dreams and goals. Um, but I don't know, that's for what it's worth. What do you think about that? Well, I know it's hard to focus too when you do it. Mm -hmm. in a group. I know when I have people over to do a dream board party, I hardly ever get my dream board done. But some people are really good at it. Uh, I think it's just, um, you know, you have to realize that you're probably not going to get it all done. <laughs> but the thinking up to it and the, the processing afterwards might be helpful. So one-on-one mm. uh, -on -one conversations, absolutely. Those are necessary to have with your sponsor. And if the people are moving forward, then you, you have coaching calls lined up at QSC and beyond and things like mm. that. So um, Amy, go ahead. She's back. I'm back. Thank you. I don't know why my computer was running out of juice. I don't know. That doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, um, thank you for being patient. And um, I want to respect your time today, too. I know we've been on for a little I while. Sorry, I messed you up on your, uh, what you already figured out was a good timing. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I, I, um, I had a couple of things that I pulled out of of the archives that have inspired me and you know repurposing old trainings <laughs> and bringing us back around to the things that inspired me on my journey i thought well that's a great thing to you know leave you guys with because i inspiration is is like it, it, it's life to me <laughs> being inspiration really is gives me hope that i can do this too and you can do this too and it helped me just take the next step um sharon mentioned um the danger of neglect and jim Rohn. i think at the beginning and you know if you haven't plugged into jim Rohn, i would encourage you to check out this life philosopher and, and what he has to say. But he talks about the danger of neglect. And I've often said, you know, an apple a day. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. We've heard that, right? What if that's true? What if everybody, if everybody ate an apple a day, it could have that big of an impact on their health. But here's what we really know is true. The things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. And, you know, eating an apple a day can be easy, but it's also easy not to do. And so it's the little things, the danger of neglecting the simple things that can take us down a path where we don't like where we end up. But helping people to understand the compound effect of doing the little things over and over again consistently can take you in an amazing direct direction of where you do want to go. I, um, I heard a training years ago from John Maxwell and he talked about success and I'm going to leave you with a few of these key points, not the whole training, but just a few key points. Success is knowing your purpose in life, growing to reach your maximum potential and sowing seeds to benefit others. That's his definition of success. Knowing your purpose in life, growing to reach your maximum potential and sowing seeds to benefit others. John Maxwell said, you will never exhaust your capacity to grow towards your potential or run out of opportunities to help others. I love that. <laughs> he also said the evidence is overwhelming that you cannot begin to achieve your best unless you set some aim in life. Setting a goal, having an aim is gonna help you become a better version of you. We all need lots of long-term goals to help us pass the short-term obstacles. And we need short-term goals, little goals, so that we can see measurable progress in the direction of our dreams. There's two very important things about goals. You've got to think them and you've got to ink them. Those things, you gotta think it, it's gotta be there and you've gotta ink it, you gotta write it down. And I suggest writing your goals down every single day. Oh, that will change your life right there. <laughs> Secondly, the key to success is knowing your purpose 
The second key is growing to reach your maximum potential. The major reason for, for setting a goal is for what it makes of you to accomplish it. What it makes of you will always be a far greater value than what you I get. Think you. Thank you. Jim Rohn says the greatest gift you can give to somebody else is your own personal development. 10 two-letter two words that will change your life. 10 two-letter words that changed my life. If it is to be, it is up to me. And I took responsibility for my own personal growth and my own personal growth in this business. The good news is you don't have to do extraordinary things to be successful in this business. Good news. You don't have to do extraordinary things. Just do the ordinary things over and over Again, that's consistency. Get good at these three simple disciplines. Share the Juice Plus products in Tower Garden. Share our products, share the business, give people that opportunity to join us and promote events. The event could be a three-way call. It could be a Zoom. It could be Juice Plus Live. It could be a connection to another person. Share the product, share the business, promote events. It doesn't happen just because you want it. It doesn't happen just because you need it. It doesn't happen just because you deserve it. It will happen because you work for it. And boy, did I, this business teach me that. The, the rewards of working hard towards the goals that I set for myself. We make it, and then the third key to success is sowing seeds to benefit others. Success in life has nothing to do with what you gain or accomplish for yourself. It's what you do for others. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Proverbs eleven twenty five: the generous prosper and are satisfied. And those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. That's a beautiful picture of this business. Two questions. Well, one, Zig Ziglar is often quoted as saying, you can have anything you want in life if you will help other people get what they want. And I would just end with one final question. If you had said no to Juice Plus, whose health would be worse off? If you had said no to Juice Plus, whose health would be worse off? Success comes to you when you care more about others getting re results on the product than you do the money that you're making. So whose health would be worse off if you had said no? Boy, I started making a list of all the people, my starting with my family and my friends and people that I've shared Juice Plus with and their health story. And I made a list of their, of their experience. And any day that I got a little bit down, I'd go back to that list. Whose health is better off because I said yes to sharing this, this mission and this um solution with others and it helped to pick me back up and keep on going and um to dwell in the positive because we have so much to be thankful for in this community and um success is knowing your purpose why are you here and why are you doing this growing to reach your maximum potential and sowing seeds to benefit others and that's a beautiful picture of what this business is all about and um, that makes it beautiful that you guys are part of this team and on this call and connecting and, you know, getting, getting the inspiration that you need, plugging into these calls. Sharon and Doug, I just, my hat's off to you. I salute you for the consistency of providing this safe place for people to show up and to get inspired, get education, get community, build belief during this COVID time. This is a, a huge gift. That's huge. Um, beautiful leadership on your part. Thank you. We love it. We love our team and we love you, Amy. Thank you so much for blessing us. This is your team too. And anytime you want to come back or bring your team members, we'd love to have them too. Um, so yeah, we've, we've loved having this community with us through COVID and COVID's not over. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amy, you're going to make me go back with my notebook and sit down and, re and watch this whole thing again with a notebook this time, which is what my mind told me to do. <laughs> yes. Right. Thank well, you. I, I also think that Thank I see some of you guys taking notes. I'm going to put the chat notes in the live stream under the comments. Awesome. I'm going to send them to you, Amy. But... 
if you did take notes, please put them in the comments and Team Transformers. I think it'll help everyone. Because there are so many good nuggets. She's always good for good nuggets. Thank you so much, Amy. You've helped us it's so much. It's so fun oh, doing sure. this with you, Sharon, though. This is, this is you, are, you are energy giving, and that's a fun part of this business. So thank you. <laughs> thank you we so much. You. Say hi to Scotty for me. I will. Thank you, Doug. And you too. I left you out totally. I'm sorry. No, that's good. <laughs> it took you a little longer to catch on to how brilliant all of these women were, right, Doug? Oh, well, you know, men are slow learners. So I've learned that. No offense, guys. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. But he's, well, he's the one that's think who's, when you said whose health would be better, is better because of us saying yes, he's in the kitchen. He goes, Mine. As I'm making, as I'm air frying tofu. <laughs> Where does that come That's from? That's a good example. Nalani. <laughs> oh, I, do, I have to give a shout out to my husband. I took him to my first conference and that was the smartest thing I could have ever done. Okay. Yeah. Actually, the very first conference that I could have gone to, he said, no, you can't go. And I was like, what? But it was right before, it was October before our busiest season in candles. And I, you know, he didn't get it yet. So the next conference was six months into the business. And um, I took him with me to St. Louis um, 23 years ago to a conference. Best business decision you can make is bring your partner, your spouse to the conference. So a live conference to experience it. And at that conference, we were introduced to cassette tapes, okay? We didn't text videos to anyone back in the day. We had to share a VHS. Well, they came out with these cassette tapes from Mitra Ray, and it was called Call Me in the Morning. <laughs> and um, he said, you should buy some of those because you could share, you know, the videos, the, the, those cassettes with people. And I said, okay. And I was going to buy a bag of 20. And he said, 20? You should get 100. And I'm thinking, that's $100. <laughs> they were a dollar a piece, you know? So every time I shared something with someone, I was spending a dollar. I was handing out dollar bills every time I passed out a cassette tape. But he said, buy 100 of them. And I did. <laughs> so thank you, Scott, for encouraging me to invest in my business which was an investment in myself, coming with me to the first conference and encouraging me. He was really the wind beneath my wings the whole way. So I would not be where I am without my husband's support. And there's another and there's a story like that with Scott where you thought about not going to something and he's like, well, aren't you going to do this as a business? What was that one? Was that a JP Live? I was a sales coordinator. And, um, you know, I've experienced what most of you have probably experienced if you've been in this business for more than a year. And I've been around for probably two years at that point, a year and a half, and I was discouraged. And um, comp the spring conference came up, which was probably in California. So from Florida to California was a long flight and a lot of money to go to a conference. And um, I was like, nah, it was two years in, I remember now. I said, nah, I don't think I'm gonna go to this one. And Scott said, and because I had taken him to that first conference and he saw the vision bigger than I did, he said, well, I thought you wanted to be a national marketing director. And I said, I do, but I just don't feel like going to this conference. And he said, well, if you wanna be a national marketing director, go buy your airfare right now. I said, okay. And I did. And you know, of course, that conference changed my heart, changed my vision, changed my focus. And it really was exactly what I needed. Whenever you feel like I don't want to continue, this isn't working, I'm not good enough, I'm not as good as Sharon, I, you know, whatever. Whenever you have those feelings, that's when you need to step it up and you need to plug in even more. Okay, I'm done preaching. <laughs> and, and getting him to conference, you know, it's funny what you said about buying those tapes or whatever. If he was there and he says, hey, why don't you buy these tapes? If you would have bought them and he wasn't there, you would have brought them home. And he said, he would have said, why'd you buy all these tapes? You but know? he had 
experienced the conference, <laughs> got inspired with me, saw the vision of what this could do financially bigger than I did. Men are more skeptical. Like we need to see it. We need to touch it. We need to get vision. That's why, you know, when there's a men's, when I post about a men's call, that's a good one to say, hey, let's have a glass of wine and watch the men's call. Why don't you watch this with me? <laughs> and then when they can hear from Jeff Roberti or Gita Bo or Kurt Beavers, you know what I mean? It gives yeah. you vision. I, I didn't go to a conference or anything for seven years when she made NMD. And then I got there and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a legitimate company? I had no idea. <laughs> well, thank, well, thank you, you. Amy. Thank you, everyone who stayed on. Sorry we went late, but it was worth it. Totally worth it. Maybe we can bring Amy <laughs> back someday. That's right. Oh, please, please do. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> And everybody else too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so much.